Right, uh, let's have a look at uh, June's trades. Uh, as you can see, we've got here yeah, the first day of trading day of June and the last trading day of June. Here was our first trading signal, which was generated in June. Uh, this small little candle over here. Oops, where's my Fibonacci's? Let's just go and draw the Fibonacci's in on that candle. Right. Now, as you can see, we were entered there on the long of that candle. Uh, as we would normally place a buy order, a buy stop order on the high of that candle, stop loss on the low, and our target will be up there. As you can see, this candle over here, it entered us into the trade and it also stopped us out of the trade immediately. The second trading signal came up over here, which is then on the 18th of June. Let's go and draw the Alpha Bonacci's in once again to over there. Now, as you can see, up to the end of June, we still will not enter into that trade. So we will look at it in July, what happened in July to that trade. Let's move on to the XPX. Right, where are we? There. That was the end of May. Let's just take this one. Uh, 24th, 21st, 26th, 27th, 28th. All right, there. There's our last day. Now, <coughs> the XPX, once again, looks completely different to uh, all the others. Uh, right, where's our first? There's our first trading signal. Here's our first trading signal generated here on the 6th of June. Let's draw our Fibonacci's in on it. Where? Which was this one over here? Right. From the high to the low. Now, like normal, buy order on the high, stop loss on the low, target up, or up, where are we? Right, target up on the three risk. We were entered. Something I'd like to mention to you at this point of time, because here's now a very good example of it. The market opened up above our entry. So you will not be entered at the high of that candle where your entry was. You'll be open, uh, your trade will be opened on the opening price of this candle over here. But at the same time, we had a, a uh, close above the 61, 161. So we brought our stop loss to the high of this candle here, which should have been the entry point. We left it. This is an opening above the 261. It's not a close. So I would not move my entry yet. But we left it. And here we had a close above the 261. So we brought our entry up to the our stop loss up to the 161 level over here. And of course, it just went. And the same thing once again. Our target was over here on this red line. This candle, we had a big gap between the closing price here and the opening price over here. So on this specific trade, you made more profit than you expected because if it opens up above the uh, target or your take profit, you'll be taken out on the opening price. And also the same for a stop loss, right? If it opens up below your stop loss, you're going to be losing a little bit more than you expected. But anyhow, if you look at this trade over here, look at the risk we had and look at the profit. I mean, hell, you know, you just can't get it better than that, really. It's a pity that uh, on a daily chart, the system works great. If you go down to a four hour, even to a uh, one hour chart, it's not that accurate and your results are not as good as it's on the daily chart. On the daily chart, yes, uh, you know, it takes a lot of patience every day to come and check, is there entry, isn't there entry, must I move my stop or whatever. Uh, you need a lot of patience. But the good part of it, you know, that a guy, how a guy must look at it, you only spend maybe, let's say, two times a day, 10, 10 minutes a day, two times a day. So you spend maybe 20 minutes on the opening of the FTSE and the opening of the uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange. How much better can you want? I mean, to spend 10, 20 minutes a day working. And uh, if you look at the potential, Hell, it's great, man. I'm telling you honestly. The losses that FTSE has had this year is mainly because of the uh, Brexit thing. Nobody really knows what's going on there. Uh, I don't think they know themselves what they want to do. Uh, I just wish they want to get it sorted out so that the FTSE can get back into its uh, normal trends again. Uh, I've never seen the FTSE as bad as it has been this year. But anyhow, let's continue. We look at the FTSE recovery trade uh, once again. Yeah, I am going to uh, stop, uh, pause the video, and I will run the back test. As soon as I've got the results, I'll be back with you again. We're back again in a moment. 
Right, we have reached the end of the uh, cycle for uh, June on the uh, recovery trade EA. And as you can see over here was the last closing of the last cycle. Let's just going to have a look. One, two losses and then yeah, righto. Uh, fine. And we can see the account is up by $150. We cannot count this one yet because it's not the end of the cycle yet. So we are up $150 here on $1,000. Let's just go and see. Uh, right, where are we? Cancel. 150 divided by 1000 gives us 15% divided by 6 for the 6 months. So it's 2.5%. Ah, a little bit better than last month. 2.5% uh, is acceptable. I think uh, average of 2.5% per month uh, is looking better and better all the time. Uh, righto. Now with that said, uh, we'll just move on to the uh, Ichimoku breakout. Righto, let me just close over there. Move this out of my way and close that one there. And we can move on to the Ichimoku breakout version 1. Right. Uh, as I said before, let's wait uh, for the uh, backtest to finish running and I'll be back with you again in a moment. Righto. The uh, back test for the uh, Ichimoku breakout has ran right up to the end of uh, June now. And let's have a look at it. As you can see, if we look at this one over here, it was closed because of the uh, time when the uh, uh, the time of the uh, back test closed on the end of the month. This was the last winning trade that hit the take profit. So we will have to work on uh, $192 profit for up to so far. For 2019 so let's just go and work it out we said uh, 192 right uh, cancel 192 divided by 500 that gives us 38% growth Wow uh, divided by 6 and that gives us again 6% almost six and a half percent once again so this one seems to be averaging about 6% per month. So if you're going to increase the account size to uh, maybe let's say $1,000, you'll still be running around about 3 to 4% a month, which is, I think, very uh, sustainable. And uh, your drawdown is going to be so small that you will not have a heart attack uh, when you open your account and you see the drawdown. Uh, the drawdown is what causes people to start closing trades and uh, start doing funny things that is not really needed where if you are trading within your limits and uh, you know you, you take a small drawdown of 20% or whatever it's you won't have a heart attack uh, believe me and you wouldn't even worry to do the next trades that are coming up where if you're over trading and something like that happens it's a uh, it's heart attack material believe me and you will not want to do the next trade you most probably pack it up and just give up trading uh, and that's what happens with I think 90% of people they over trade they believe all the hogwash they see on the internet and read on the internet and uh, they trade it and they lose their account and most probably they lose a good part of their investment or uh, money they really can't afford to lose and uh, it causes them to stop trading and then maybe you could have may have had a good future trading because after all if you do keep your uh, limit your losses and let your profits run uh, and you've got your basic trading principles in order I do think that uh, the markets can offer you a quite a good lifestyle uh, if you can just manage your own emotions and get yourself into order yes the markets can really give you a good lifestyle uh, with that uh, let's move on to July